In this video, we'll cover how to take a complete medical history. Free practice material on previous videos is available through Wizdolia, including multiple choice questions, flashcards, and case scenarios that give you personalized feedback as you answer. Find the link to the question sets below. History taking is a crucial skill in medicine. The context is important, so the approach may need to be adjusted to meet the scenario or work environment. Before beginning, we need to confirm the patient details, and on our entry, we need to include the date and time of the encounter, our name, designation, and the service we represent. The last three being communicated to the patient as well, so that they know who you are, and that they are happy to proceed. I tend to first list the demographics of the patient, the main ones being the age, sex and occupation. For example, a 50 year old male builder. This gives a little context of who the patient is and also very briefly what presenting complaint has brought them in. The history of presenting complaint forms the bulk of the history in most cases. We would begin with an open question like what would you like to discuss today being a good example in general practice, less so in arranged follow-up consultations. Then, let the patient speak without interruption. This should be the case for several minutes, depending on the time constraints you have. Then, ask more focused questions if there is still information you need that they haven't given you from the open answers, which is often the case. The challenge is how do you know which information you still need? This is where it's useful to have a structure to follow. For example, Socrates being a famous one for pain. This is because you're less likely to forget to ask about certain features by using a structure. But of course, you can't have one for each possible presenting complaint. But a general principle is to try to form a coherent story as to why the patient has presented. DOPS is a mnemonic to remember duration, onset, progression, severity and symptoms, which can be a structure to help build a narrative. In reality, even if you do have a structure to follow, you'll need to be able to adapt based on the person. Think of it more as a guide to prompt your questions rather than a script to follow. Linked to this is the commonly termed ICE, standing for ideas on what the patient thinks the problem may be, concerns that they have, for example, could it be that they're worried the symptom they have represents a cancer? And expectations. What are they hoping you'll be able to do? We'll use a presenting complaint of feeling dizzy in the 50-year-old male builder as an example. Overall, we'd want to know how long has this problem been present? Let's say three days. And it's useful to explore why have they presented now? For example, if someone has had a pain for several months, what has changed to cause them to seek help now? Asking this question can help confirm continuation of a chronic problem or identify a new problem on a background of a chronic one. In this case, he may have presented because the dizziness has caused him to nearly fall over, whereas normally he is very steady on his feet. We'd also want to know how did it start? Was there a particular trigger such as a medication change that coincides with the symptom onset? For our example, the patient denies any specific trigger they recall in the last few days, but states the only other problem they have had is knee pain for several months. It's also beneficial to ask if they've had this problem before, and if so, what was it attributed to? Let's say in this case, no, it's his first episode. And we would also ask about progression. What have they found that helps or worsens the symptom? In our case, it seems to be getting worse. And... He has found that it is worse when standing up from sitting or lying. He also mentions the knee pain has been better with ibuprofen. That brings us to S in the DOPS mnemonic. How severe is the problem? How does it impact daily functioning? We've already said in our patient, the dizziness is making them a risk for falling, a large difference from normal. Another example could be with shortness of breath, where a patient's normal exercise tolerance is to walk several miles, whereas now they are breathless moving room to room. The change from baseline can help determine the severity. We'd also want to know about associated symptoms. Generally, this is a gateway to do a review of systems. 
and to ask of broadly related symptoms. The review of systems is useful because by asking questions on seemingly unrelated systems, we might find features that are to us relevant, but did not seem so to the patient, and so they did not mention them. In our case, asking about a change of bowel habit reveals the presence of melina that are black stools. Bear in mind each specialty will have points that are particularly relevant for them. For example, general cardiovascular screening questions include any chest pain, shortness of breath, including orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, ankle swelling, lightheadedness or syncope, or palpitations. Other systems histories include any urinary symptoms like dysuria, incontinence or frequency, and more general features like nausea, vomiting, systemic features like fever, unexplained weight loss, or night sweats. Questions may also be grouped. For example, if the patient is complaining of headache, you could ask here about fever, neck stiffness, photophobia or vomiting that may point to a diagnosis of meningitis or subarachnoid hemorrhage. So to summarize our history of presenting complaint, we have a 50 year old male builder who was presented with a three day history of worsening dizziness with a one week history of melina. If the setting allows, it's helpful to look at old records to gather a past medical history as some of their conditions or interventions may be connected to the current presentation, although this isn't always possible. The patient may know their history very well, or may have a poor understanding, therefore checking the record with the patient's permission is generally done. In our example, knee osteoarthritis and an appendectomy are the only listed past medical histories. The same can be said for medications. What the current medications and doses are, any recent changes in medication or doses, and compliance with medication. In our example, we've mentioned ibuprofen use. Certain medications can predispose to certain conditions. For example, those on anticoagulants are more prone to bleeding and may be more relevant in surgical settings where intervention may be needed. Others include long-term steroids, which may need the dose doubling in cases of acute illness, or alongside immunomodulators, may predispose to infections. This also tends to be a good place to explore the presence of any drug or other allergies, including what reaction they get. Next is the social history, which we've somewhat covered with the occupation, but includes general level of functioning and carers if any, as well as who they live with. Smoking taken in pack years, alcohol and illicit substance use should also be explored here. Travel history and sexual history may also be relevant and taken here. Family history is particularly relevant in younger patients, but can also be useful in older patients. For example, presence of cardiac events in family members under 50 suggests genetic involvement. It's useful to identify the relations and what age they developed the condition. Physical examination should then be documented, including vital signs, which may include some more specific measures. In our example, a lying and standing blood pressure, potentially. Another example may be blood pressure taken in both arms in someone with chest and back pain. And if available to you, recent investigations such as blood results, ECG, imaging or cultures should be noted as part of your history taking to inform your diagnosis. Although in some cases, especially in general practice or emergency medicine, the investigations may not yet be available. Based on the combination of your history, physical exam and investigations, a problems list and differential should be formed and listed. Listing the differential also helps provide a framework for a solid management plan. In our case, it could be orthostatic or postural hypotension, secondary to hypovolemia, coming from blood loss, and number three, upper GI bleeding from a suspected peptic ulcer, secondary to ibuprofen use. You'd also include any relevant scoring systems here, like the Glasgow, Blatchford score for upper GI bleeds. Your plan should match the issues identified above. Of course, there are variables, but for example, it could go something like, number one, blood transfusion of two units of red blood cells, an urgent endoscopy, keep the patient on a cardiac monitor, stop ibuprofen use to prevent any further injury, 
intravenous proton pump inhibitors post endoscopy and a gastroenterology review. This way each problem will be addressed and the management plan becomes more organised. History taking is a fluid process that will vary depending on patient, situation and experience. However, in general, should give you enough information to establish the reason for presentation, a differential diagnosis as a basis from which to generate a reasonable management plan.